What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's IP of Her Kids IRL here. And what I'm going to be doing for you today is I'm going to be talking about the end of the season and how to prepare for season two and the seasons moving forward. Um, you know, this is a season based game. And what that means is basically the, basically the game itself is going to run for anywhere from pretty much, I believe it's probably going to run closer to 90 days per season, uh, currently gauging at how fast things are progressing. Right now, we're pretty much entering the one month into the game, and I think it'll probably run for about another probably month and a half to two months um, before the final season starts to roll over. What I mean by that is we are going to essentially wipe, right? If you played games like Rust, um, Escape from Tarkov, and I know I'm mentioning games that are not mobile games, but they're games that you might be familiar with if you're playing this. They're games that wipe, you keep uh some games will let you keep permanent progress and in this game you're going to get permanent progress and you're going to go from the ground up with new acquired heroes skills and different rewards leading you into the next season each season is going to essentially um condense servers right it might be as simple as c servers one two and three are all going to merge together and they're going to move into a new season together right the best are basically going to keep condensing together until you get to the most powerful server there's ever going to be um so we don't know how many servers are going to merge together we don't know how the player base is is going to be merged yet based off of what i've played from other games and if you've looked at my channel you'll know that i've pretty much been playing these games and documenting them uh throughout my career uh on youtube so i do have a lot of experience playing these games and I can kind of go from based off of my experience how these games break down how the rewards function um, and several different things like that and give my opinion based on someone who's played games very similar to these and how these seasons work so basically right now what's going to happen is is if we go over here to the rewards we'll break down the rewards for us and we'll go to the rules right what you're keeping what you're getting rid of so let's first talk about um rewards for instance and right now we're in the middle right i'm not even at the civic center needed yet you pretty much need to be 23 24 25 you need to be as max as you can and for this one right here it's 24 i know for some other rewards it's 23 so go ahead as a baseline go ahead and get civic center level 24 now the base rewards for the end of the season is a vanguard that is a level 22 capital so Basically, what that means is, is you had to have required a level 22 capital. That's not a level 22 city. That's a level 22 capital. So um, that right there is going to pump you up to Vanguard. And then from there, you're going to start to be able to earn the end of the, war, end of the season rewards. And this is really what you want to focus on if you're an active player. If you're kind of just playing the game very passively, you don't have to worry too much about this. But, you know, even if you're playing the game passively, you want to be in an active alliance anyway. So, um, that's my recommendation is, you know, as the, it's only season one right now, make sure you get in with a good guild, a, a bunch of, a bunch of good buddies, definitely to progress the seasons with. That's what I definitely found. Um, and while, and while I'm not with my primary guild right now, for instance, they're on another server. And so whenever the servers merge, for instance, I'll be with my main guild, for instance, the woo, the woo. So, um, so yeah, as the servers condense, um, you'll see these rewards differ like it might not always be Cleopatra. It might be someone else So let's kind of break down the rewards how they scale very simply I'm not going to run through like every single reward Specifically, but I will definitely talk about how they scale up and basically from Vanguard. It's going to start at 1600 for the Alliance leader and the officials and then 600 Let's just go ahead and scroll up to max and you'll kind of get an idea about how things scale up if they basically double so 3,400 for the Alliance leader and the officials, and then also 1,800 for other members. If you basically win the server, that is getting to the middle of the map, that's acquiring the middle, and that's winning the server, right? And holding it until rewards pump out. So basically what's gonna happen is at the end of the end of the season, right? If you're in a tight, tight thing, they're gonna announce that the season's gonna merge. You're gonna have like two days where you need to hold on to it and then the seasons pretty much what you're gonna to want to do is hold out until the end of the season with the middle held and it's gonna give you the maximum amount of rewards so let's kind of break down what you get no matter what right because i really want to talk about if you're in a not if you're in an alliance that doesn't exactly win what do you get right because i think i think i'm talking to the minority if i'm sitting here and talking about the people that are just gonna win all the time right what do you get no matter what you no matter what will always get cleopatra badges most important thing is you will get a random awakened hero from the entire pool that's very important 
um, you're going to just get an Awakened Hero. I think this is just great. It is random. It is not like the Season Pass where you get one that you haven't Awakened. This is just any one, so it could be something you don't have. It could be something you have. So I do think that's fantastic, though. An Awakened Hero just right off the bat for winning, for playing and getting the Civic Center required, and so long as your Alliance got Vanguard, you're doing very well. So, and you also get a summoning key at every level. It doesn't matter if you're um, a regular ordinary member or if you're the Alliance leader, you get a classic summoning key, which is big because that might give you an SS skill, which will be fantastic. Um, at the bare least, you get 20 Cleopatra rewards, and at max, you get 40. So, um, I think it's fair, you know, um, to the people that win the server, they get the most amount of rewards. That's fair, right, for being the best of the best. But no matter what, even if you don't get the best of the best and you're a casual player, so long as you're in a kingdom that gets kingdom or vanguard, you're still doing actually very good. You are still getting the same awakened hero that everyone else is getting, whether they're the alliance leader or not, right? So long as you get that, you are still in a good spot for going into the next seasons, right? Just so long as you get into a vanguard kingdom. Um, whoops. Let's go back. And just in case you're having trouble finding the Chronicle, the uh, the rewards, right? You basically go over here to Alliance. You go over to Road, and you go over to Chronicle Settlement. Then you go over to Rewards. Now, the military rank, this is basically just for the Vanguard, Marshal, Vanguard, Commander. You just basically get, essentially, just a lot of rewards. Um, a lot of specialized. 40 Legendary is huge. 12 General Stones is huge. A lot of Glory um, so you do get a lot of rewards if you, um, if you're a Supreme Marshal and Supreme Commander. So, and they just kind of scale down from there. So you get, you get a whole bunch of little, you do get, the biggest thing is you get those 12 summoning keys. That's a lot. Um, so, winning the server is a big thing, but also, as long as you're a casual player and you're getting just any sort of the Vanguard Kingdom rewards, you're doing very well for yourself. Um, now this is basically after Siege 1, 2, and 3. Um, right now we're pretty much pretty close to Siege 3. Um, and basically the way that I know is if I go out, we're basically in Kingdom Settlement 3. So I am in the third stage. So basically in three days, this will settle. And then the third stage will, um, and just for reference of where the server is at one month in, this is one month in, I just want to share with y'all where we are currently at right now. So we are at the, um, the next spot into the middle. I don't exactly know what each spot is called because each thing kind of, this is L'Oreal and this is Jade. So we have one more region to move into. And then what we're going to do is all start fighting for the middle, right? And there's, um, so basically there's going to be a capital right here, and then this will unlock, and then we'll all start fighting for the middle. So that kind of breaks down the little bit of the progression, where I'm at one month in, and what you can expect on your server to be at at one month. Um, so talking a little bit more, let's go into what you're going to keep and what you need to be kind of focusing on. I'm not going to talk so much about the teams you need to be starting, um, it little little pointers this is just a general overview about what you're going to find at the end of the season and what you might want to start focusing on so let's go over here to the road let's go over here to chronicle settlement let's go over here to rules so basically this is what this is basically how the settlement is going to work now at now the settlement season time and details will be announced before the before the server ends so basically probably about a week Close to a week, it's going to announce that the server is ending and it's going to merge with other seasons or merge with other servers and the season will come to a close. So basically one, two, and three, for instance, might all get merged together and all three of those all three of those servers will enter a group chat together. Basically, like just how you have your normal chats, but there will be a season chat and it'll be all those servers combined. So you'll get to know a little bit about some of the diplomatic parts about those servers if you're not like playing on them, right? Some people have alts that they play on as well rewards basically just the rewards are very general what we just talked about all those rewards will be sent to you um and basically so long as you do a vanguard and go up from there right that's the baseline rewards for the end of the season that's just it's talking about the rewards so that's what we just talked about you want to be civic center level 24 let's just say that um issuance of reward you'll be entered the mail whenever you enter the next season okay so don't think that you're going to get your rewards right away right and that's important what I would recommend is whenever you get into your new season, open up your rewards right away because that could definitely impact how you're going to start your season. If you didn't have a Caesar and then you just awakened him, it might affect the way that you're going to start out your teams. So right whenever you hop into the next season, have a general idea about who you want to be starting, right? Who, who, what kind of teams you want to be starting, what skills you want to be using. Use all your rewards right away. Don't just hold on to them until the last minute to open them. Open them up right away 
go ahead and get your rewards and see who you got. It might impact how you start. That's my opinion on that. Issuance of reward, mail, um, season points. This is very important, okay? This is what you need to be grinding for no matter what as you're playing the game. You need to be focusing on your prosperity, your merits, your stronghold points, and achievements points. Um, I'll run through achievement points at the end. But basically, achieve, but basically, stronghold points, be capturing your strongholds every day. You get rewards for doing it. Merits, you just that's basically just PvP and city fighting. Um, and prosperity. So that will all transfer, right? It's not going to be like a one-to-one. -one. It's basically going to be like maybe like 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, whatever the amount is. That's going to be able to buy you rewards from a shop in the next season right a shop's going to open up and it's going to be like you can buy a piece of armor for 200 you can buy a skill point um for this skill or anything like that will be opened up so make sure you're playing consistently if you want to get the maximum amount of rewards so what it's what that shop's going to contain yet we don't really know but we'll focus on that whenever we get there preparation server transfers this is probably just a little bit more of the reading on i'm going to try and break it down i'm not going to talk about the nitty-gritty but in the new lore, but basically what the first three talk about is your basic gaming experience will be reset that is your town hall that's your that's your resources that's coin that's um war orders and, and any sort of regular base playing item will just be deleted okay just so you know like if you're thinking about oh i just get these these resources very quickly am i going into the next season with them no you are not um alliance badges uh scarlet the one thing i do want to talk about is uncollected dispatch armor please make sure that if you're going to a new server uh to collect all your dispatch armor right finish that out if you need to use speed ups use them so military trial items special location orders will all be cleared um so don't think you're going to go into the next season with that now you're probably like wow what am i going into the next season with this is what we're going to talk about right now from five on uh, is artifacts you're gonna be keeping your artifacts you're not gonna be able to use them right away don't think that you're gonna use your level seven artifacts yet you're gonna be using your one two threes and fours you're gonna keep them but they're gonna unlock as you progress your civic center and upgrade your buildings that is how you're going to keep unlocking your artifacts right so don't think that you're just gonna get your level five artifacts level six level sevens right off the bat you will start with your level ones it is still impactful to level up all levels of the artifacts like what i was talking about with the armor sets be sure to be upgrading things because in the next seasons to come you'll have them right away right that's the reason why you want to upgrade your battering rams for instance next season you're going to get those level three battering rams level four battering rams level twos level threes and all that good stuff whenever you open up those characters so you won't be grinding for them like right away as like many of the other people that are doing it right now so be grinding for those things even though you might not be using them now heroes you're just going to keep all your heroes all the attribute points like if, the, if you have like a five-star mary tutor you're going to keep your five-star mary tutor you're going to keep all of your heroes all of your skills you're going to lose all of your skill points though so that's any of like if they're it's a if it's a level 20 ability right it's going to go down to level one and then you're going to grind your way back up so um don't think you're going to keep all of your same skills your heroes will all go back down to level one basically just what you did whenever you started the game skills keep them um and you're going to keep all of your like little little badges right you're going to keep all of your little badges you're, you're going to keep all of your armor um so you're going to keep all of your armor you're going to keep all of your skills also the shards as well you're not going to lose your shards um so just make sure that you're using those um leveling them up and everything like that focus on your skills with your summoning skills and um and everything else like that ancient scrolls that is basically what you do with your pvp stuff right so just make sure you're pvping in your wars or, or um, you know the arena fights every day make sure you're upgrading that as your civic center upgrades you'll start to unlock them that's basically what that's talking about flag skins you'll keep them alliances will be dismissed this is something that's not too clear yet how how this how the alliances are going to work so um, it's one of the big things, right? Because most games like this let you pick a region and then you start in it with your other alliances. Alliances lay claim to them and then you, sh like, big big guilds, right, will start in one, uh, one server on a side, right? But in this game, all that, and I will read this verbatim, all alliances will be dismissed in the new season. Progress of all the alliance and road, and road to conquest, all the data, player-formed countries will be cleared. 
players will obtain settlement rewards based on their performance. When a new season begins, the member pack will be reset to 90. When a new season begins, an alliance will only be able to recruit new members within an area they have successfully occupied a city within. That can mean a couple of different things. That's if you're, it, that might mean like uh, Silent Empire, for instance, might roll over into the new season, but it just might not be able to uh, recruit new members until you take a city. So, I don't, not quite sure on this. Um, you know, we will see right whenever the servers merge, we might get a little bit more clarity on this. But this is the only thing I'm not too clear on right now. I will admit is the alliance, how they will move on. If how Because I think the alliances want to also grow, right? Whenever the, whenever the servers merged or started on season one, right? Everyone was really fresh. I like how they piled you in together and they started up the alliances from there. Um, how it'll work going into the new the new seasons, I do not quite know yet. I will know pretty much right at the end. So I'll probably make a new updated video right at the end, but this is to prepare you as an overview for season two and what you need to be working towards. Ring of Glory, uh, this is basically just the PvP arena. This will all just be reset. You'll get rewards based on your highest tier. Achievements, um, basically the achievement things, I'll run through that at the end. Not to not talk too much about that, but you'll get some rewards from there. Overseer's new trade route mechanics, you know, will be available in the new season. This is basically the rewards from the trade route. Um, so you'll get you'll defeat them and save the caravans and everything like that. So not too big there. Uh, males, make sure you pick up all the rewards before you go into the new season, right? If you have any sort of things that are handed out in your mail from the game uh, that they might give you, make sure you pick those up. Uh, character clearing, you know, this is a big one. Any Civic Center underneath level 10 will just be deleted. Will just be deleted. Um, I think this is fine. You know, it prevents alts from spamming the server and having a bunch of spies. I think that's fine. If you're not really getting up to Civic Center 10 at least, you're probably not playing too much anyway. And you probably just want to start on a new server anyway rather than rolling into the new servers with n absolutely no skills um, or heroes going into it. So um let's run through achievements real quick let's run through achievements not too big here um basically these are the achievements right here this is what you get for the season it doesn't show it just yet it doesn't show the season rewards just yet because we haven't really unlocked it this is the chest that you unlock as you go it's basically just a whole bunch of these things right here basically you just have a whole bunch of these things that you just need to work towards basically your civilization your conquest um different things that you just need to take into consideration whenever you're doing um whenever you're doing uh general gameplay right like you it's what you need to focus on try and max all of these out before the season ends it's going to be your rewards for going into the next season um and yeah just follow along on the achievements tab try and knock as many of them as you can out before the new season starts you'll have this you'll have the maximum amount of rewards if you just kind of follow those baseline guidelines that i was talking about being an alliance that's active, making sure your achievement points are done. Um, if you want to try and aim for it being high in the alliance that is winning, that is, of course, very good. Um, so, yeah, that is pretty much everything you really need to know about what you need to prepare for as an overview for going into Season 2. Um, and kind of as we find out more information, I will be absolutely talking about it closer to the end of my season for instance i will absolutely go through and talk more about teams to start skills to start so um be on the lookout for that and uh thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace